He loves Formula One, high society, and long walks on the beach in Russia with a random woman he just met. Once a playboy, always a playboy? Here's even more weird stuff about Prince Albert of Monaco. Prince Albert may have been born into the royal family of Monaco, but it took some time for him to understand the full extent of his background. As the son of Prince Renier of Monaco and American movie star Grace Kelly, Albert was not only expected to embody his royal role from a very young age, but also to understand certain elements of Hollywood life. And during his younger years, the prince definitely did not fully comprehend his mother's rather glamorous past. But I don't want to be worshipped. I want to be loved. According to Jeffrey Robinson's Grace of Monaco, The True Story, Albert needed quite a bit of time to assimilate that his mother had been an actor, and a super famous one at that. Apparently, he and his older sister, Princess Carolyn, would watch some of their mom's old movies without understanding that the films didn't represent real life. The two siblings would watch their mother play various characters, but would wonder why she wasn't behaving like they knew her to be in real life. This was especially true when Albert and Carolyn watched the 1953 film Mogambo. As Carolyn recalled in the book, there's one scene where she turns to Clark Gable and says, I didn't know monkeys climbed trees. It was the silliest thing I'd ever heard. We'd repeat that to her and then break up laughing. Being children, it was difficult for us to understand that she was acting. Most Olympians spend their entire lives training for that one make it or break it moment. Even Prince Albert's wife, Olympic swimmer Princess Charlene, who placed sixth in the 200-meter backstroke at the 2002 Short Course World Championships, once told a local outlet in Monaco, "...this dream became mine during my childhood, that of participating in the Olympic Games, of winning a medal." In contrast to most other elite athletes, Albert had a much more casual introduction to the Olympics. Although the prince competed in the bobsledding competition five times between 1988 to 2002, he didn't even begin learning the sport until after he had graduated from college. He also wasn't aware that bobsledding was really a thing until his junior year. As he recalled to the Amherst student, "...I didn't really think about it until the Olympics in 1980. It was during that time that I went up on a weekend to Lake Placid to watch some Olympic competition. Then, I saw a bobsled competition for the first time in my life." Eventually, Albert said that he reconnected with his old nanny, whose husband just so happened to be a bobsledding coach. It was then that the prince decided to start training, but admitted, "...I stumbled into bobsledding. It's an incredible story of coincidence." I kind of said to myself, I, "...maybe I'd like to try that someday." It's no secret that Prince Albert has fathered at least a couple of royal love children over the years. His eldest daughter, Jasmine Grace Grimaldi, was born back in 1992 after Albert's fling with a California-based realtor. And his second-born child, a son named Alexander Grimaldi, who arrived in 2003, was the product of a six-year-long relationship between Albert and Air France flight attendant Nicole Coast. However, when his two oldest kids came into the world, Albert wasn't quick to claim paternity. In fact, he didn't take responsibility for Alexander until he was just shy of his second birthday. And he refused to recognize Jasmine until she turned 11. Given this complicated history of illegitimate children and his own royal status, one would think that Albert would take this issue seriously. But the monarch has been known to joke about the many paternity cases that he has faced over the years. A close friend of Albert's told Town & Country, "...one day Albert told me, "'Oh, if I listened to all the claims, I would have more children than anybody else in the world. Sometimes I make jokes about it. I say that I'm too old to be his son." And he laughs. Speaking of wild paternity allegations, no singular claim could ever be as strange as the one filed by a Brazilian-Italian woman by the name of Maritza S. According to court documents, Prince Albert and Maritza first crossed paths at a Rio de Janeiro nightclub in 2004. But it didn't take long for the monarch to take his new lover on an extraordinary trip to Russia. As the story goes, Maritza claims that Albert introduced himself to her as a Canadian lawyer and diplomat who was traveling the world on business. He apparently invited her to join him on his international adventure, whisking her away to Lisbon and then Milan. While the pair were in Italy, Maritza says that Albert even helped her apply for a Russian visa, with the help of the consulate of Monaco. As soon as her documents were in order, Albert and Maritza were said to have traveled to Moscow, where the prince introduced his lover to none other than Vladimir Putin. As bizarre as this story may sound, Maritza's lawyer told Town & Country 
that his client had submitted credible documents to back up her claims. What's more, he noted that Maritza was not interested in suing Albert for money or fame. That is, that is the worry. Apparently, all Maritza wanted was a paternity test, because nine months after her supposed trip to Russia, she welcomed a baby girl. It appears that odd relationships with the prince may be a thing. In fact, the monarch's own wife, Princess Charlene, has also had some interactions with Albert that were completely out of the ordinary. One of the best examples occurred in 2011, shortly after Albert and Charlene tied the knot. Like many other newlywed couples, the pair commemorated their nuptials with what was supposed to be a romantic honeymoon. But it soon became clear that instead of cozying up with each other and forgetting everything else, Albert was there to work. As ABC News reported, Albert didn't spend his South African honeymoon lazing around with his new wife. Instead, he stayed holed up at a hotel in Durban, where he kept busy with his royal duties. In a statement to the Daily Mail, a senior palace official explained, the prince was in a meeting at the Hilton with members of the International Olympic Committee from July 5th to 9th. For practical reasons, it was better to sleep there. To add to the weirdness, it eventually came out that Charlene wasn't staying at the Hilton in Durban with her husband. Instead, the princess spent her honeymoon solo at a seaside hotel located 10 miles away from Albert. As a Daily Mail correspondent remarked to ABC News, you have to ask, why couldn't Charlene have stayed in Durban? It's a mystery. Princess Charlene's honeymoon wasn't the only time that the Zimbabwe-born bombshell was left high and dry by her prince. In 2021, Charlene came down with a mysterious ear, nose, and throat infection on a trip to South Africa, and she went months without seeing her husband. This was reportedly because her condition was such that she was too weak to fly back home to Monaco. As one of Charlene's friends dished to page six, she suffered severe sinus and swallowing issues stemming back from an earlier surgery. She has only been able to take in liquids through a straw, so she lost nearly half her body weight. We don't know why the palace is downplaying that she almost died in South Africa. Given the precarious state of Charlene's health, one would think that Albert would have rushed to South Africa to be at his wife's side. Still, during the vast majority of Charlene's illness, the prince remained with their children, thousands of miles away in Monaco. In fact, during the six months that the princess was abroad, Albert only visited his wife twice. According to People, he touched down in South Africa once in June 2021, before returning to her side once more in August. While he was technically present for part of Charlene's ordeal, Albert chose to be away from his sick partner for weeks on end. His legacy needs to, be, needs to continue, and I'm here to support that. These days, Prince Albert may hope to portray himself as a family man, but in the past, it's been suggested that the monarch was shirking his fatherly duties. In 2014, Albert's former lover, Nicole Coast, went to the press to publicly accuse the prince of not spending time with their son, Alexander Grimaldi. As Coast told the Daily Mail, the truth is that, I'm sorry to say, Albert hasn't seen Alexander since a brief visit last September. According to the former flight attendant, the reason for Albert's absence in his son's life was a direct consequence of his marriage to Princess Charlene. Coast explained, it has become impossible since he married that girl. I suppose as a new wife, how would one feel? But she should think about my innocent child. I don't want to attack her, but I think it is just jealousy, and I don't know why. Of course, beyond the obvious tensions between the women in Albert's life, Alexander also seemed to struggle with his father's absence. As a close friend of Coase told the outlet, Alexander misses his daddy dreadfully. He has started to feel sad and rejected. Apparently, as a young boy, Alexander would tearfully ask his mother if he could visit his dad, and in an attempt to protect his feelings, Alex was always told that his father was busy. Still, it appears that it's never too late for a new beginning. The now 20-year-old Alex has been snapped sharing more frequent visits with his royal dad.